Are you a sales rep using HubSpot and want to know the most efficient way to use the tools so you can spend more time selling and less time clicking around? Well, today's HubSpot hack is all about the day in the life of a sales rep using HubSpot. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. I've been using HubSpot for sales for a number of years and training a lot of my clients on the best way to use the tools. And the first thing I always recommend are tasks, tasks, tasks. As a sales rep, you do a lot of outreach. You talk to a lot of people. It's impossible to remember everyone and all of the follow-ups you're supposed to do that day. So it's really important to stay organized by using your tasks. So when I click sales and tasks here, I can see everything that I have set up for myself to complete this day. I actually recommend bookmarking this page. So every time you log into HubSpot as a sales rep, you'll see your tasks and everything that you have to complete this day. There's a few ways you can use the task tool, like task queues, which we have another video on, but you can also sort by task type. So you can see I have 312 tasks here due today. I have a, a bunch of emails, LinkedIn connections I need to make, and phone calls. But say I have some dedicated time I wanna to spend to actually logging into LinkedIn and making my connections. I can sort my tasks by connection requests. I can sort them by emails if I wanna block off some email time. And for this example, I'm gonna demonstrate um, running through all of my calls for the day. So once I've selected my task type, I can go over here to the right and start all of my tasks. Now you don't have to sort by task type. And this is something I like to do because if I have a bunch of calls to make, I like to keep my head down, get all of my calls uh, out of the way while I'm in that calling zone. So if I click to start all of my tasks with this button over here on the right hand side, it's actually gonna run through all of my tasks in one view. And if you actually have outbound calling set up, you're gonna get this pop-up to make the call directly from your browser. If you wanna set up outbound calling in HubSpot, you can check out one of our other videos, one of our other HubSpot hacks and see exactly how to do it. Um, but because this is a fake phone number, this is a fake portal, it's telling me that I can't make the call, but when, uh, when it's a real number, it's gonna look a little bit like this. Um, when you're making that outbound call where you can automatically select the outcome. So if you did connect with them, you can mark that you connected or if you left a voicemail, if you did connect, it's a nice easy place to leave all of your notes here. And then it, I always like to point out, it's really important down here on the bottom right. So guys, whether you're making phone calls or emails inside of HubSpot, you're always going to see this is the option to create a follow-up task. HubSpot's default is three days from now but you can always change that. Say you connected with them, they want you to follow up with them tomorrow, or you wanna select one of these other, uh, any other shortcut dates or a custom date um, to follow up in you know, about 10 days, you can do so. And then changing the task type, whether it's supposed to be a call, an email, a LinkedIn check. So we're gonna make another call um, in about 10 days and we're gonna log and complete this task and then you'll see that automatically it created a new one here for me in 10 days to follow up with this person. So now that I've made my phone call for Justin, I can click next and it's gonna take me to call number two of 158, as you can see here on the top right, that I have to make this day. So hopefully you're seeing how this is a really efficient way for me to quickly get through all of my tasks for the day and using that task feature um, after I complete my call or, or, or send an email to make sure that my follow-ups are scheduled so that this person stays top of mind and doesn't just fall into the depths of a cluttered CRM where you have you know, qualified leads that don't have any tasks on them. I'll also point out on this top browser here, you do have some shortcuts. Say you decide now's not the best day for me to call Brittany. I'm gonna reschedule this task for another day. I can do so. Or say maybe I needed to check on something before I make this call. I could skip this task and go to the next one and it'll still continue to walk you through uh, all of your tasks for the day. So guys, highly recommend bookmarking tasks and making this your default view every time uh, you as a sales rep are logging into HubSpot. The next tool that I really recommend uh, using are actually contact views. So if I hop over to contact and then contact views, by default, it shows you all contacts, but there's a couple views that I recommend as a sales rep setting up, like for example, my contacts is one that's already given to you, which is gonna show you all of the contacts that you own. And I really recommend making one called my last contacted that has these filters here in these columns that are showing you some HubSpot calculated properties for you. So HubSpot does some work in the back end. As long as you're logging your calls, logging your emails and your activities inside of HubSpot, they'll auto, uh, auto calculate the last time you 
contacted this person, if they even, uh, if they ever clicked on an email link that you sent them, if they ever opened an email or replied to anything you sent them, or if they're currently in a sequence. So guys, again, this is some fake data. So this, this isn't, um, going to give you a great example of what this looks like, but you can see how I could use these filters in this view to sort by show me everyone who recently replied to an email, show me everyone that I've recently reached out to who maybe hasn't replied, show me everyone who's now longer, no, now no longer in a sequence if they used to be, and now they aren't, it would show false. If they are currently in a sequence, it would show, show, show true. So um, recommend saving these filters. The way to set this up is you can click advanced filters here and look for the filters that you want over here on the right hand side. And then you can edit your columns to look for some of the properties that I recommended like sales email click dates, open dates, reply dates to make sure you're staying top of mind with your contacts. This is also a great way to make sure you're not missing anything to see if there were any email replies you missed. Uh, people you forgot to set follow-up tasks for, which we want to make sure we don't do, but it does happen. You can search in here for maybe anyone who's replied to an email um, after I've actually emailed them. You can use filters in here to find those contacts. The third and one of the most important areas I recommend as a sales rep where you go to every single day and becomes a habit of just routine every day is going to sales and then looking at your deal deal view. So there's two different ways that you look can look at all of your deals. So here on the top left, we have our deal board. This is my preference. I like to see everything across all of my deal stages, where my deals are at, uh, but you could also change to what some people call a list view. You might hear it called a hamburger view because things are stacked. Um, so whichever one you feel is best for you, use it. I'm a big fan of this board view here. Uh, there's some other, uh, I recommend setting up some views here too. Like for example, if I click this drop down here, I can say, just show me all of my deals. Um, so that way I'm not seeing what any of my colleagues are doing. I can just focus on everything that I'm doing for that day uh, and see you know, which deals might be missing amounts, which deals might have closed dates in the past, making sure I'm keeping everything updated, making sure they're all in the correct stages um, because that can greatly impact my day. You know, Maybe I forgot to put tasks on one of these deals, I can click in here, see when the last activity I had on it, see when my next activity is scheduled. So again, guys, this is some test data, so not all of it's too, um, too, too relevant, but you can see how um, if you have no activity for you know two weeks, two months, two years on a deal, how this might signal might be something you wanna close out. You also might be noticing that these deals are gray. Uh, deals get grayed out if by default, if there's been no activity on them for 14 days. So that's an indicator to you that maybe it's time to reach out to this person um, or potentially consider closing up this deal. Um, you can change that setting if you want to here under board actions and then edit board. Um, on your cards is an option to set uh, after how much time are cards uh, is a deal considered inactive and by default uh, it's set to 14 days. So, so far we've covered tasks, we've covered contact views, We've covered the deal board where I also recommend using views. I'm now gonna hop over to the number one tool that sales reps love and the tool that made me fall in love with HubSpot a number of years ago, which is actually sequences. So if you're not familiar with the sequence tool, it's a way of automating follow-ups to, uh, to your prospects, your clients, and a way of making sure that you don't forget to set those follow-up tasks. We're gonna hop into a sequence that we've already created called event follow-up. And if you hover over it, you can click edit to see all of the steps that are happening in this sequence. If you wanna know more about creating sequences, we have a whole HubSpot hack uh, on how to do it that I highly recommend checking out because I'm just gonna do a high level overview here on sequences um, where you can see your summary here. So the sequence has six steps. It takes 12 days to complete and 33% of it is automated. So the first step in this email is an automated email on day one. It uses some placeholder tokens that we have to fill in also some personalization tokens here, which are great to make the emails look personal and make sure that um, it looks nice and neat for if you're bulk enrolling or send this to a lot of people. Um, and then it creates those follow-up tasks for you. So I, rec I, I mentioned you know, making sure you're not forgetting to set those follow-up tasks here. So um, my next task is to connect with them on LinkedIn. After that on day four, another email will go out to them. Four days later, I get a task to call this person to follow up. So you can see, how this could save me a lot of time as a sales rep because instead of needing to remember to do all of my follow-ups, trying to think, okay, I made a call three days ago, what do I wanna do next? 
I can use this sequence to kind of take the thinking away and just have it be automated. So any previous work is actually continuing to work for me so that I can get new prospects um, into my funnel, into my pipeline, so I can really fill up my pipeline with as many deals um, as possible. So I highly recommend checking out our other HubSpot hack on sequences. Again, it's the tool that made me fall in love with HubSpot uh, many years ago. It's constantly getting better, constantly uh, adapting to help sales reps in their day to day. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this HubSpot hack on the day in life of a sales rep and happy HubSpotting.